All right, man. What the hell is going on? Hi, Thumos. Hope you're doing amazing. We got to freaking talk. Now, have, do you ever feel like something is just going on that's it's not right? Like, you ever just feel it within your body? Like, maybe you're motivated here and there. Maybe you got, like, a bunch of joy some days. But the other days, you're just like, what the fuck is going on, dude? What is going on? That right there, that's like your body telling you something. Something ain't right. Something is fundamentally not right. And here's what I'm starting to think. What I have thought for some time. There is a level of disruption that has been sown into the public. I don't know who's doing this. Okay. That's not what I want to talk about. But it is there. And if I was an evil person that wanted to bend the world freaking over and just create it in my image so I could just run around with my little buddies and do whatever the fuck I wanted to do, then I would, you know, if I wanted to shape the world how I wanted it and I was evil, then I would make sure that all the people around were unhappy and they served only me and my crew. That's what I would do. I wouldn't get rid of them. I need those people. I need them to work for me. I need them to do stuff for me. Now, when you look at your life, use a bit of awareness. Use a bit of your mind and go outside. And you start to think, why do people disagree all the freaking time? Why are we so, you know, it's 2024 and there's freaking war that people have to think about. This is not good. What the hell's going on? People are trying to pay their bills. People are stressed the hell out. People have so much tension in their lives. And they don't know what to do. There is this dissent that's been kind of pushed into people's daily lives. I think we have to be aware and again, stand vigilant against this chaos. That means using your mind, using your eyes, using your awareness to see where the destruction is being, the outlet of destruction. If that's in the sports, if that's in the media, if that's in the movies, the television shows, when I was a kid, even now, even now, I, I, I have a hard time watching like things without constantly picking it apart because I'm aware that people are marketing to you, okay? I'm also aware that there is, there is a sort of conditioning of the mind. Within our minds, if someone was to put an image out there repetitively, and show you something, repetition, the road of that would ingrain itself within your mind and take up a place. It would take up your mental spirit. You would begin to accept things. And so I would always watch. I would always be on guard for like subtle manipulation. What are they trying to tell? Why in this freaking Tide commercial is this father a freaking idiot? Why? And then I start, okay, so why is he an idiot? But then I saw multiple commercials of guys being idiots and their wife being like, hey, retard, why are you acting like this? But they, of course they didn't say it, but you can see this like disgust and this contempt for the husband. And the kids are like, ha dad, <laughs> dad, you're just stupid. You're just an idiot. Dad's like, oh, why is this? What? Well, if you think about it, if the women don't respect the husband and the kids don't respect their father, how can they be a peaceful, loving family and feel like everything's all right? How are the kids going to feel? Well, the mother doesn't get the positive reinforcement, the stoic sort of 
the stoic sort of energy from a father that is grounded, that has his eyes on something bigger. So that gets passed down to the woman. Then the woman is just free to freaking be uh, emotional. We have all this chaos and anxiety in her mind. And then what does that do? It gets passed down further to the children. Now your children are a bunch of idiots that are afraid of everything. And so this generation rises up of fearful young men and women that don't have a good moral compass. And then what happens is you're filled with fear and the fight, flight, or freeze mechanism kicks in to preserve your life because you've been filled with a constant state of fear of the world and everything. You're not able, at least you don't believe so, that you're capable of stepping up to that thing. So you just freeze to preserve your life. And you see this, uh, especially with young men, men all over the place. They are freezing up playing dead almost in their own life, where they actually begin to rot, lay down and rot, dude. A lot of these guys are rotting away. They've given up on their health. They've given up on their, their, their gifts of discovering any form of mastery, trying, discovering a woman for a relationship. They are filled at the end of the day with fear. And there's no better place to complain about that fear than online. And if you just see, if you just pay attention, you see patterns. This is the key. You got to pay attention. You do not want to get overly emotional. This is why I say emotional men are weak because your emotions cloud your reason and judgment. You begin to see if I was to have a little boy and, or a girl, and I was sitting there watching TV with them and I, there was two guys kissing. I would say, son, these two guys kissing, this right here, this is not normal. Two guys cannot have a baby together. If they adopt a kid, the baby's not gonna have a mother. Like you're a beautiful mother that loves you and cares for you. This is not normal, but it's a message that's been pushed and widely accepted. And I would tell them, there would be no anger. There would be no hate. I would not want him to be angry with these people. I want him to see how things are being pushed and accept it as normal. The drugs, the talks of hoes, and the music, the constant debauchery, whatever you want to freaking call it, all right, in the music, the heartbreak. Why, son, do people that are sad feed their sadness with sad music? Does that make sense? Wouldn't you want to be happy if you're sad? So then why would you continue to listen to sounds that reinforce how you feel in this sad state. I would teach him. I would show him. So he would be able to pick up patterns. He would be able to see things. And how the people are not really freaking happy. And they're losing their minds. And he would say, oh, wow. I see why this person is so unhappy. I see why people are so freak, freaking the hell out all the time. It would start to click. It would start to make sense. He would be able to guide himself. And he would be able to find people that he connects with. He would be worried about loving those people. He would have a calm mind because he can see clearly. He wouldn't need to be filled with tension and stress. He would do what he needs to do in front of him. He would be able to provide food for himself. Be able to pay his bills. He would have to work. He would be able to discover things. He would be able to try new things freely without making it all about him. But he would learn that he doesn't need to accept this state of life where he is stuck in confusion. He doesn't need to cope just because there's confusion out there. He would have the tools and the fortitude and the equanimity to be able to figure that shit out. He would scoop his freaking nuts. And that is what I hope that all of us can get to, man. I really do. I hope we can all get to this place. Be in your mind and be at peace in your mind. It's okay to be calm. It really is. It's okay to be calm. You don't have to force calm. You don't have to seek to always be calm and to eliminate all the stress from your life. That just makes you uh, more anxious. But it's okay to be calm. It is okay to not always be strung the hell out and constantly thinking, it's okay to have love and compassion inside of you. Everything will be just fine. 
You're not going to get swept away. You're not going to get left behind because you're not amped up all the time. Grind, grind, grind. And I think that people, the modern world has conditioned us to almost be addicted to stress, to tension, to noise. If you look at your own life, when was the last time you didn't need some constant chatter? You didn't need some constant noise. I think noise, like people are addicted to noise. We're talking about this in the group. People are addicted to noise. Not just music, just fucking noise. But that is not where your genius lies. The genius lies in you thinking, being clear, being able to observe, calm. It's okay. It's okay. And I, I think uh, I think this state of being should be, it should be a part of your life to cultivate this state of being. Where you do not allow yourself to get filled with fear. And when you do feel fear, not just fear of failing, not just fear of going and approaching that girl. That's not what I'm saying. But when you feel a roadblock, instead of freezing up and coping in some weird way by watching more YouTube videos and, and thinking to yourself, I got demons, I need to go work on them. No, that fear needs to be confronted. That fear needs to be confronted. There was a guy in our group now, I was talking to him. He's like, when I was young, my dad, he would like, he would like hurt me. Like he would, he would beat me up when he was angry and drunk. Later on in life, he learned jujitsu. And one day his dad was, you know, he's older now. His dad was like, come on, let's wrestle. He, you know, kind of put him in his place. And he freaking, he put his dad in a freaking, uh, he pinned him down. His dad was helpless. And he said, in that moment, my something, a weight lifted off of my shoulders that had been there for ages. And I realized then that I'm the man. I'm the freaking man now. And I can handle myself. And that trauma of the past, that that conditioning, that fear that I felt, I had stepped up and it felt, he said this is his own word, he said, it felt like I had slayed a dragon. That right there is cool as hell, man. And a lot of us got these, these fears in our life not demons that we're running from. It may feel like that, but more exercise and more tension and more freaking energy drinks and more, you know, running away from things is not going to figure it out. It's literally stepping up and confronting and then preparing yourself to deal with the freaking stress and the embarrassment and the judgment and whatever else you can think of. You're prepared. That's what it is. We're men. We're supposed to be prepared, vigilant, alert, aware, prepared, ready for action. And that's what I think we're losing. We're losing that preparedness. So condition yourself. You have a calling that you need to embrace and you need to be aware of the world and what's going on. Not, not, I'm not saying watch the news and be aware of, you know, oh, Korea might attack us. No, nah, whatever. But you need to be aware of the subtle manipulations that sow unhappiness and confuse you in the daily, in a daily life. Because if you're not aware of this, these will take up the thought form in your mind. You will allow, and out of nowhere, years will pass by, and you're just going to be a depressed mess. And your health is going to suffer. Your outlook on life is going to suffer. Your mental strength. You, you'll find yourself alone. There's no people you care about. You'll find it hard to socialize. You'll find it hard to step up and be creative and to figure shit out and to go out there and try. Like it's going to be way harder because you've conditioned yourself to freeze in the face of fear that has been sown into you in this world. All right. That's all, dude. Keep the spirit alive. Hi, Dumos. I will talk to you soon. Peace.